Crayola, the brand that nearly everyone has nearly used nearly once in their life, released the special box of crayons last year. These babies. Now, I was but a shallow husk of a human being last year, so I wasn't aware of this occurrence. But thankfully, a crazy banana peel did and brought it to my attention. Wait, is that actually how you spell peel? I've literally never seen it written down before. Okay. I originally thought that this crazy banana peel was saying that Crayola actually invented new colors that like the world had never seen before, but that was not the case. Instead, they made a set called Colors of the World. In 2021, the crayons were joined by colored pencils and water-based markers. Casually pretend that that didn't happen. I just recently purchased all three sets, so I thought we could take a look at them and see what they're all about. This is not Crayola's first dive into a skin tone set. If you're kind of old like me, you may remember that they had something called the multicultural line. These were just boxes curated using colors that you could find in other sets like black, burnt sienna, mahogany, peach, sepia, tan, and white. The new colors of the world set are made with brand new colors with the help of a chemist who actually worked in the makeup industry named Victor Cassell. They also worked with experts in skin tones to create much more accurate colors. There are 24 separate pigments with three separate undertones, rose, almond, and gold, according to Crayola, is to authentically reflect the full spectrum of human complexions. Yes, I googled this a few times. I even read the press release. <laughs> Anyway, there are the same 24 colors in each, just obviously different, uh, what are they made out of? I mean, it's the same pigment, but it's a different product. We got like wax, lead, juice. <laughs> okay, maybe I should stick with the voiceover. Let's take a look at the crayons first. The crayon set, like the other two, are a 24 pack. I guess if you go to Walmart, you can get like an exclusive one that's 36 that includes hair and eye colors, but those aren't like exclusive to the set. They're just curated. The crayons have special paper with a beige gradient from, I don't know, <laughs> a light to a deep tone. And of course, each color does have a name for its pigment. This was my very first time opening a brand new box of crayons since second grade. And something hit me in the face. Ooh, that beautiful crayon aroma. <laughs> Whoa, okay. I forgot that was a smell. Now that all of the crayons are outside of the box, I decided to swatch them. I decided to organize it by the three undertones. It came out to have seven with a rose undertone, 10 with an almond, and seven with a golden. Since I was still new to these sets at this time, I also organized them by value, but I could swatch them in a meaningful way that would be useful later on. Now I knew I just needed three sections, one for rose, one for golden, and one for almond. I swatched them starting with the lightest value and moving towards the darkest. What, you can't see anything? No, your eyes do not deceive you. That, that That's what it looks like. They don't call it extra light almond for nothing. I also labeled each of the colors beneath them with their color name for easy reference. One time I even wrote the name first because I was feeling real crazy. So I swatched all 10 shades of the almond undertone, removed the annoying wax crumbs. Ugh. And it gave me my very first view of what I love about these packs. With 10 shades with the almond undertone, you have a variety of lights, mediums, and deep tones. Ah, it, it's great. Like, look at it. And I'm not even talking from like a skin tone set perspective. I'm just talking from a set of colors to have this much variety in only 10 individual crayons. It's I love it. Imagine having 10 blues with that much variety. Imagine having 10 greens with that kind of variety. I'm just, I'm blown. And maybe there are sets sold for some kind of art supply that's like this, but I have never come across it myself and <laughs> it's just so refreshing. Anyway, once I had composed myself, I proceeded to swatch the golden undertones, starting with the lightest and moving to the deepest, lining them up with the almond undertones. I was able to easily discover which of the golden undertones were not included. With the almonds, you have extra light, very light, 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 medium, 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 deep, deep, very deep, extra deep, and deepest. Whereas with golden, you're missing extra light, very deep, and deepest. Moving on to the rose undertones, after swatching them, I discovered that they're missing different ones. I assume there's some kind of rhyme or reason to this, but don't ask me. The three values that Rose does not include is extra light, medium, and deepest. Explain it to me. I don't know. There's still like enough variety where it's not like it's annoying, so I assume there was a purpose. Anyway, once they were all swatched, uh, naturally I tried to find which one matched my skin tone. I'm not sure. The bottom of my hand, I feel like Rose matches. The top of my hand, golden kind of matches. But then also almond. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna come back to this. But for now, those are the crayons. Let's move on to the markers next. These are taped. No match for my knife. 
Their markers are separated inside their box into three separate smaller boxes, each with eight markers inside. Oh, well, you know what you gotta do. Wingardium Leviosa. They don't usually survive that spell. The markers do not have the same fun gradient that the crayons do. They swapped that out for the classic white barrel, but with a light beige Crayola design. <laughs> what else do you call that? And their usual matching cap and bottom. Swatching the markers actually was a much quicker process because now I'm accustomed to what colors are in here and I knew exactly how to organize it. As I surmised at the beginning, each set has the exact same colors in each, so the markers have the extra light, very light, 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 medium, 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 deep, deep, very deep, can't forget extra deep, and deepest with the almond undertone. And just like the crayons, the golden undertone emits extra light, very deep, and deepest, and the rose emits extra light, medium, and deepest. Side by side, you can see just how similar the pigments are between the crayons and the markers. And I mean, I don't know how that works, but it seems kind of impressive to me. But yeah, the last ones, the pencils, the ones I was most excited for. Since we've already talked about the crayons and the markers, these aren't really that much different than those, except, you know, they're pencils, which I think is something I can actually incorporate into the art supplies that I already use. And that was the reason I was most excited for these. Again, it's a set of 24. They do have the Colors of the World branding on them. What I don't like is this gold foil. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. No, that's just how Crayola labels their colored pencils. But to me, it's just difficult to read. And I found when I was trying to swatch them and find specific pencils that I had to hold it for like multiple seconds to figure out what it actually said because they have such similar color names. And it was just a little frustrated when it should have been something that took like, you know, a millisecond. When swatching them, I did it the same way I did all the other ones. <laughs> Except because they're pencils, you can get push harder and get a darker color or push lighter and get a lighter color. So I kept my circles because I just think swatching the circles is superior, but I did like a little gradient from the left to the right to kind of showcase values you could get with just one pencil. It's really pink, but it says slight almond. I don't know, this one seems misplaced to me. Was it like that for the other ones? I guess they all were. I'm just only just noticing. After finishing swatching them, I could see that yes, they were the same set as the previous two, as I suspected, and the same colors were omitted for the different undertones. Don't make me say them again. <laughs> you know the drill. Obviously you're gonna be limited when using these sets of what you can draw with them and you'll need to substitute other colors, like to draw things besides flesh tone things. But I'm just kind of impressed with the way it's put together. As for finding my skin tone, I feel like I'm an almond, maybe. Am I this very light almond? Like in pencil, I think I'm a light almond. I could even be a light medium. I should try and make myself. What do you think? I feel like it's only natural to attempt a self-portrait. I don't like to zoom out like this because it warps the lens, but sacrifices had to be made to fit this many art supplies into the camera, into the view, into view. Should I limit myself to only using these supplies or can I use a pencil? Arbitrary rules I like to give myself. <laughs> I think I'll let myself use a pencil. Should I do one with the crayons, one with the markers? I'm gonna start with the crayons and I'm just gonna guess that I'm a light or a very light. We'll start with the lighter one. We can maybe build up blush or something. We got some ears. You can't really see it. <laughs> we gotta build it up more. <gasps> I can't be trusted. This has been happening to me since I was a kid. This is a flashback. At least these days I have prettier tape. I'm gonna move on to the light. Can you like build these up? I think my hair is less saturated than these. Oh, actually, it's like this deep golden. We'll go one lighter just to layer it off and then we can use obviously a variety of it. Ted, gradient. I guess this could be my eyebrows too. <gasps> it kind of looks like me. <laughs> I've done hair and a face. I think what makes it the easiest to like find the one that's most similar to yours is that you have that spectrum to kind of compare to. Because otherwise you're looking at like swatches next to other colors and things and it can get kind of confusing. Maybe you can like blend crayons. Crayons, excuse me. For lips, I'm gonna try. <laughs> I can't see my own lips. I'm gonna try medium deep rose. Actually, I'm gonna try light medium. And some blush. And I need my freckles. Oh, I can color the hair back here. I don't have hair just on the front of my head. I could use a darker one. Shading that. Those ears just keep getting bigger. <laughs> Probably could have drawn that bigger and it would have made a difference. Can't really do freckles with something crayon, I don't think. 
but I'd want to grab medium deep. I mean, this is pretty impressive for crayons, right? <laughs> These colors and how accurate they are. I mean, I think so. Let's try the markers next. Kind of tempted to grab like a paintbrush and some water and dilute them a little, but we'll try the first one actually sketch this time. Guess we're gonna be putting on some markers on here. I guess we'll be able to get a little bit more detail this way too. And I'm gonna go ahead and use line art on it. Give it a body. Neck would probably be nice. Eyes, eyebrows, all that stuff. Freckles. Hey, we have a body. We have a face. We got hair. And we have the colors. <laughs> the colors of men. Should have done the crayon one this big. <laughs> Oops. Throw in some line art here. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't test these markers. Nah, forgot. They're water based. I don't want to use a water based pen. I guess we gotta add color first. I'm on the wrong side. Find the right marker. Begin by coloring it in. We want to be quick. We don't want to go over the same spot too much or hit that line art. Shoot. See how when it layers itself, you can see. Oh, I love this marker. That is such a nice pigment. Crayola, can you expand your alcohol based marker line to more than 12 colors? <laughs> I want these! Yeah, see, because it's like water-based, you kind of got that. But I think when we start adding like blush, I mean, it won't blend. I'll probably use this very limitingly as shading. The pencil kind of helps too. I'm gonna move to light medium almond. Shading. Ooh, do you see it ripping up the paper there? Make sure it's dry before you touch. Double check the hair. It's this one, deep golden. Now I'm gonna go straight in with the right color this time because you don't wanna really layer these that much. Potato brown was always my go-to for hair and it wasn't because it was like accurate. It was just cause it was the prettiest version of like this brown. But yeah, this one's a lot more accurate. This looks like my hair, it's kind of creepy. I'm actually really amazed right now. I can't put it into words how much this looks like my hair color. I feel like it gives me more leeway with features and still having it look like me because the colors are so good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to keep the flow of the hair. Guess we need some eyebrows. I'm gonna go with the next darkest. Oh wait, the next darkest is extra deep. I wonder if I can go with the very deep almond shading because it'll also make it less gold, which should in turn be less saturated. So try that, a bit dark. It definitely pushes this area backwards. Could use this for line art too. Texture. My hair does get a little lighter near the bottom, so I wonder if I could grab the medium deep gold. Ha! I didn't have to go to Walmart and I found my hair color. <laughs> How lucky is that? I got little hairs <laughs> for the eyebrows. Which color are my freckles? I feel like they're this. No, one lighter. Try this. I just really like markers. They're my favorite art supply. Preferably alcohol based, but you know, I'll just make do. This might've been a bit dark, but I'll take it. Okay, now we don't have my eye color. That's what you would need the, <laughs> the Walmart one for, but that would have only been in crayons anyway. We'll just grab an Ohu marker. Not that light blue. Yeah, we'll start with this. That blue is not accurate. I guess the one I grabbed first was better. So I wanted to do was use the rose ones for blush. Oh, I want to start with this, but like you can't really layer them up so we'll see okay my lips are darker than that they're not that pink actually <laughs> oh well we'll just use this for blush though like here pink all right i do want to try add line art though see what i think about it after that obviously it's like kind of patchy that's something you could kind of combat if you got some water and mixed it with your markers well mix the markers into the water Oh, that's not quite dry. It's kind of ruining my nib. Don't ruin my limited edition pad. I'll give that a little break. Switch to a larger nib. Fill in these little cracks. Some liner for the hair. It's not really usually how I draw eyes, so it feels different to me. Does this pen recover yet? Ayo, what's how do you think? Well, this is like the doll version of me. <laughs> quite impressive, honestly. I'm not sure the skin tone's quite right, but I just did line art before I double check. Is that not what I used? Makes me wonder. I feel like my face is lighter than the rest of my body anyway, so maybe it's more accurate than I realize. Close? Close? Oh my gosh. <gasps> wow. All right, the last one to do is the pencils, but I'm wondering, <gasps> I should have used those instead of the blush. Okay, wait. See what we can do here. Clean this up, blend out some of the streaks. Don't think I need the pink color. I need the almonds. It's starting to look a little muddy. So this is like supposed to be the base. And then I would want to go one darker to add shading. Maybe two darker. Let's try deep almond. I think it looks a little smoother. It's also got like the pencil texture on it now. What I think I would use the most is using these on top of Copic markers, like for skin tones specifically. I have a really hard time kind of uh, formulating my thoughts. 
Because, like, part of me's like, okay, what's the big whoop, right? But then there's this really strong part of me that's like, these are colors that I don't have in other art supplies. And it makes me a little sad. And the thing is, they've really, I've never seen these colors in these specific art supplies, which is exciting, you know? You see how conflicting I'm feeling? can kind of, like, erase most of the pencil texture. That would probably be my ideal way to use these, is you lay them down with the marker to get nice flat areas. But don't ever layer them. That's where I went wrong. I think don't ever layer them. Then go over them with the pencils and kind of just clean up that marker texture since they're water-based. I could spend longer on this and I think I will. I want to try another one. I want to try it where I just do, I'm going to do pencil, then I'm going to do marker, then I'm going to do liner, then I'm going to do those pencils. And I'd also like to try the crayons again. <laughs> Now I feel like I want to give them all another shot. Let me try a full body. Should I try to do like a different person? <laughs> I haven't used like the really light tones and I haven't used like the really dark tones. So those would be the ones maybe to focus on. Let's do, we haven't really, actually I have used, I've used a little bit of each of them now that I think about it. Just to draw one person. Maybe this isn't as uh, broad as I thought it was. I'm gonna use this for the hair. I'm just gonna throw some on, see what happens. Smaller areas should be easier to avoid. What if we do one of these for the skin? I don't know. Try it. Try it. Oh, that doesn't look the same on here at all. Okay. Next, I want to use pencils. Can I just create... Oh, I forgot to erase the pencil that was under this. Yeah, kind of cheated because I forgot to erase the sketch. I think you could do that idea. Not quite as fun small because you can't really get the same texture that you get with the large one. I guess I just want to try some different variations and see. Just using the markers we have available. Erase it. Let's try some of the darker skin tones. I really like these. I'm gonna try Rose Deep. I like to kind of go around and then fill in as much as possible. I think it just gives you the best, most even texture. All right, extra deep for hair. Ooh, I actually don't like those next to each other. Well, as it dries, it looks better. It looked really green at first. Maybe we can just layer it again for the whoops. I'm gonna go down a color, but since they're, you know, water-based, it's probably gonna darken. Is it actually lifting a little? It's kind of hard to tell. Ooh, this one's turning out nice. I think all that's left is liner. I could try this and add a little like... I think what it comes down to is kind of understanding the art supply and using it in a style that suits it instead of kind of trying to make the art supply suit my style. Does that make sense? Obviously there's limitations to having a nib this big. <laughs> Not there's some liner. Might only do the liner on the eyes. Wow, what a difference that makes. Hmm, I like that. I kind of tried to adjust the style a bit. I'm learning, I'm learning. Throw some pencils. Pencils don't quite layer as much as I'd like them to. Hmm? Try another one. Let's try colors again. I want to do that same markers first, pencils second technique. Definitely still like patchy, but you know, you can get away with a lot more, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna try light gold for this. I don't think I've used this yet. Yeah, you gotta be so quick with this to avoid the patchiness. First, I thought the lighter colors showed, what's it, that build up quicker? But now I'm noticing, I think the deeper tones actually did. Mm, maybe they're just about the same. <laughs> Add a little bit of depth with that. And then go one darker, the same undertone for a little shading. Now, what hair color do I want? I kind of like, since when I did myself, I used almond for skin, golden for hair. I like to jump to a different undertone for the hair because I feel like it just adds little contrast. I mean, I don't know how real life works, but that's just what I'm doing. I think I'd like to try the rose for the hair. I hate when you miss a spot and you can't go back. Hmm, that's not as dark as I pictured it. Probably could have gone darker. I also like to use this a little, like there's some eyelashes. Might go a little lighter for the nose. Oops, that was still wet. Gave her a little beard. <laughs> yeah, you can't really <laughs> do liner with this, but I tried. It was worth a shot. Okay, let's do pencil. I could have done liner with the pencil. What am I thinking? Really like mixing them. I feel like I just add some extra dimension, mixing the different undertones. Yeah, that seems to be the optimal way to use these. I don't remember what color I used for the skin, but we'll just throw this on there. <laughs> Hopefully that's all right. Okay, that worked really well. I might add just a little liner to the face anyway. Just a little bit. Clean up the nose. Connect these lines. Yeah. Honestly, it didn't need that. <laughs> it looked fine without it. I want to do one with lighter hair than skin. I haven't tried that. The size seems to work fine though. So we'll stick with that. Someone who goes to the salon. <laughs> Rosa had something like a braid. Just trying to come up with something. Don't really need the body. It's not what we're here for. <laughs> That'll do for now. Erase it. 
Now, what can we use here? I'm thinking a golden, but that would also work really nice for the hair there. We haven't used this very light golden. We'll try this for the hair. You can't really see it. Well, you can see the pencil on this one. Little eyelashes. I have no idea what I'm doing with the skin yet. I've noticed you can layer them if you wait long enough without it ripping up to a certain extent. I'm kind of thinking. I have not done these as a skin tone. They're just gonna be so pink compared to this more yellowy hair. We have not used this color yet. It's still sitting over there. Let's try it. We'll do it over here where it's like less commitment. Well, this is too light, I think. Let's try it. I'm committing. Hey, 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 hey. Not a whole lot of contrast here, but sometimes that's just how it is. I'd definitely go up a darker one. Lips. You're actually given quite a bit of leeway when you use the rose colors. Hey! Uh, I was so nervous about this, but this is turning out. I'm gonna grab a darker rose undertone and add liner to this. I'd like to keep everything brown. And I think I'm gonna use pencils for the liner. Ooh, look at the precision you can get there. Woohoo! <laughs> what happens when you put like the marker over top of the pencil? Does that bleed outwards? I just wanna draw these hands. It's annoying me actually that they're not there. I say we just give the crayon a little more. Let's grab these guys. Bring them back. I'm gonna do the same technique since it gives you a little more chance here. Do some curly hair. I'm not organized and I can't find anything. Now I wanna try the crayons. See if they're more pigmented. No, not really. I think I'm better off with the pencils. Let's try and build stuff up here. A little line art might help. Solves all your problems. <laughs> Can I just grab randos? I really like the rose ones. <laughs> I think they're my favorite. Really have to kind of adjust the art style for these. All right, here's my opinions. I'd probably never use the crayons, but they're just not really an art supply I tend to reach for. I don't even like the adult version of crayons, <laughs> so that's not really my thing. I love the marker colors. I would be like in love if they were alcohol based. Like I knew going in, this is what <laughs> these supplies were. So I can't like say, oh, I just wish they weren't what I just bought. I have to say, I love the way the colors are organized and I like the variation inside each of the packs and I like the way they're separated by undertones and it just makes it really easy to make a bunch of different looking people and that's cool but honestly I'm really impressed and I hope I hope other brands start paying attention to the possibilities because I just think any set of any color should always have variations in this way of extra lights deepest medium it makes me want to wrap the up and send them to different brands that don't have these. It's also quite convenient to have it all in one set and have this many different skin tones. So obviously if you're going into Copic markers, you're gonna have to look for these markers and add them to your collection, which is like time and effort and money. So I think it's super convenient, especially in a beginner art supply, to have them all conveniently in one place like that. I think the main conclusion here though, if you're wondering whether you should buy them, are they an art supply that you tend to use? Do you use crayons? Do you use water based? markers? Do you use colored pencils? Specifically Crayola brand? If you do and you want to draw more people, there's really no reason not to get them. <laughs> if you do not use crayons, I don't think they're going to win you over to the crayon side. But if any of this looked fun to you, you probably will have fun doing it. So maybe you should try it. <laughs> I do want to thank you guys for watching. These were really, really fun to play around with. I still don't like pencils, but I'm going to try to get more use out of these just because they do seem useful layering on top of like an alcohol based marker. So I'm gonna keep these on my desk and see how many times I grab for them. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!